Hello colleagues, this is uh, Josh Granlund here and I want to go through technology and stuff. Uh, Patrick Freeberg and I have put together a little list of different technology tools that might help you this year. Now the expectation isn't that this is a list or a checklist of things that you need to accomplish or need to incorporate into your practice, but most of us are thinking of ways to improve our practice and so we pull, pull together uh, some of the things that we think are going to be most useful to you. So without further ado, Google Voice is going away, uh, but you can create your own uh, Google Voice um, thing for with your own personal Google account. Um, in the document that we give you, uh, there's a quick link in there that'll take you through the steps necessary. Schoology. We have provided you with a giant list of tutorials like we have done in years past. A couple of things, or actually three things that I would suggest that you try this year. Try displaying your content, what's called inline. So I'm gonna switch on over, taking a look at my one of my Schoology pages and talk about what I'm, try to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So in my Schoology page, you notice that this video pops up right away. That's because it's in a page. You see this little page icon right here? That means that this content is in its own page. Now it displays on the front page because of this little option down at the bottom. So it's this box that says ABC and it says display in line. This is checked on. If I turn this off, and save the changes, you're gonna notice that content goes away and I'd have to click on it and then I could see it. So if I edit this page again, I'm gonna turn that back on so it displays in line. That's one of my first recommendations. A second recommendation is that you embed content into your pages. So especially videos, a really nice way to do this. If I go to my, edit my page, and I click on this switch to HTML function. Now this little bit of HTML code, it says iframe source equals blah, 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 blah. You don't need to know how to program that to be able to use that. If we go to YouTube, I can click on the share button, go to embed, and it gives me the code right here. And I can just simply click copy, go back to Schoology, and right click or control V and paste that code in place. Now when I save these changes, you're gonna see that second video that I just copied from Schoology. Uh, quick little note, this is one of my favorite things about computer science, it's called Two Minute Papers. And uh, Carol Jonai Fahir, the professor of computer science, goes through different innovations in artificial intelligence. It's a lot of fun. One of my favorite things to watch. Okay. I, so that kind of covers how to do things in line, embedding versus linking. Now, if you link content, it works just fine. It just opens another window. One more recommendation that I'd make for Schoology is that you share your resources through your Schoology resource. Sometimes it makes more sense to actually link a course with another teacher. Sometimes it makes more sense to just share the same content. Um, the way that you access the course and everything is a little bit different. You might have to try it a couple of ways to figure out what's gonna work for you. Virtual classrooms. Now we have all sorts of tips here. Um, we have a couple of articles that we found to be really nice. Nonverbal feedback is gonna be huge. When you're doing a Zoom call, there's gonna be an option in there where you can click on the participants and see their, you know, see them raise a hand or you know, respond to your jokes, any number of things. We also have a list of things for improving your virtual presence. And if you like do's and don'ts, we have a document for that as well. Some quick tips that I'd like to share with you just right off the bat um, are these four things, lighting, background, positioning, and audio. So first off, lighting. Uh, make sure you don't sit in front of a window because that creates a backlight 
and that will make you look like a silhouette. The second thing I would offer is that you create a fill light. So that's lighting from the front of your face. Now the lighting setup that I have in my room here, it actually does a pretty good job. Um, but you can see underneath my eyes, I kind of have some dark circles. And it'd actually look better if I could turn on a light in front of my face and get rid of some of that. Now for the most part, so there's the light that I just turned on, and you can see it makes a little bit softer image, a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Although I already know I'm pretty cute. Background. As you can see behind me, I've done some work on my background. I found some things that are kind of interesting and reflect part of who I am. And this is a chance for students to get to know our own personality. I'd also say, get that camera right at about eye level or almost even with your nose. So somewhere between the height of your nose and height of your eyes. If you're working off of a laptop, consider taking like a box, even just a cardboard box uh, to work on top of to get that camera to keep it from looking up your nose. And as often as possible, try and make eye contact with the camera. You can see it's a different experience when I'm looking at my different screens. And the same thing goes for your students as well. The more you can have eye contact with the camera, the more engaged your students are going to be to you in this kind of virtual interaction. The last suggestion I would offer is our headphones and microphones. So right now I'm talking into what's called a directional microphone or a dynamic microphone. And it's giving you a really nice rich signal. You don't have to go that over the top, but having a dedicated microphone or using like AirPods um, as well as <laughs> uh, some other things is gonna enhance the experience for your students. You might have heard in the background that I'm having some drywall being done and so they were mixing up some uh, joint compound. But you might not have heard that because I have a dynamic microphone. Now this microphone is kind of good of just capturing the audio that's just around this immediate area and not stuff that's happening in the background. So you might not have heard that and that's actually why I selected this microphone. Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, the district has purchased a professional version of Screencast-O-Matic for everyone this year. Screencast-O-Matic does screen recording and it also allows you to edit the video of your screen captures. Now sometimes you want students to do their own screen capture and talk you through some content. In that case I would recommend using Screencastify. To get your free pro version of Screencast-O-Matic through the district there are some directions that are going to be on that Tech Tools worksheet including this link and, and everything else like that. Synchronous interactivity. I would highly, highly, highly recommend uh, that whatever you do, you focus on interactivity in your course as much as possible. You're going to see major gains in students' comprehension of your content, as well as lots of other things. Now, we've been trying to build in interactivity into our lessons for a while now. So Patrick and I have developed some ways that you can create CLR protocols, response protocols, discussion and response protocols in your class, even though everything's going to be done virtually. One of the last things here are apps. There's so many apps. But Patrick and I went through and grabbed what we thought were the most relevant highest leverage apps um, that we have actually gone through and tried and I know for myself I'm going to use a number of these. So Peer Deck, Nearpod, Flipgrid, and Edpuzzle are kind of ones that I'm really excited to use. Um, I already have some lessons that are incorporating some of these things. Just know that this list of apps are things that we personally selected because we think they would be good uh, for you to try at Tartan. Finally, we have so many other people, so much other research that's going on about virtual learning that we provided some extra things, some extra resources if you want to do more research, that you can click on these and get really good information. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great beginning of the year, Titans.